Ooh, good morning, everyone. I am getting ready to go crush it. I know, I'm still wearing the same t-shirt yesterday. I slept in it. I love it, though. It's the best feeling t-shirt ever. Look at that. Young's Lawn Care. Ah, Columbia, Kentucky. Columbia, Kentucky, sporting hometown. Um, making it good. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to crush it. I'm going to crush it. What we got today? Let's see what we got today. A little bit of Derek Brockman fitness. Let's check it out. Um, standing barbell overhead press, rope tricep push downs. I'm going to superset that. Three sets of 10. Alternating dumbbell curls, <clears throat> seated dumbbell lateral raises, a little bit of V bar push downs, uh, easy curl bar, low cable. Then I'm going to superset bent over dumbbell rear delt flies and then some dumbbell front raises. And then I'm going to superset one arm cable tricep kickbacks with one arm cable curls. And then I'm going to do a little bit of cardio. Gosh, I hate cardio. I hate cardio. That's why I'm fat. <sighs> you know, got a lot, a lot of stuff to do today. I'm going to head down to a little bit of San Antonio. <clears throat> Military uh, City, USA. But first... I'm going to go in here and I'm going to crush it at the Hill Country Indoor. I love this place. I love this place. It will knock me a, a good workout in. It's all going to be fueled by Military Trail. I got to tell you, you got to go check them out. And go check them out and like right here, right here, right here. Click on this code, Dakota OTD, 10% off. 10% off. Go check it out. It's all badass products and it's all giving back. To the right people first responders charities of first responders charity of military charity of the people who serve you so go support a brand that supports the people who serve us that make sense do it right here click it again right here nice put it there boop 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 right here click now like it i know i know you see me i was looking at the screen to see where i was touching because i want to touch it too Ding. all right there it is there it is all right i'm gonna go in here and crush it right now <clears throat> I'll let you know how it goes. So we got a little start a little late today on the vlog, but I just crushed it at the gym. See that sweat? I did. I did it. I did it. Crushed it at the gym. I'm gonna have to show you my protein here a little bit later, but um, it's from uh, Military Trail, and such an incredible brand. They give 10% back to uh, firefighters, uh, charities for firefighters and first responders. So I love that piece of it. But honestly, the product is incredible. I have been taking, I hate, like I said, I hate protein shakes, right? Like they make me feel bloated. They make me, they just make me feel so fat, right? And I'm already fat enough, so I don't need any more fatness. But what I will say is, is I like the shot because it's real little and I can just carry it in my bag and I don't have to carry a bunch of powder around, try to worry about mixing it up with water and this and that. And I just, I just take this little shot and you know what, whenever I get one, right before I take it, I will video it and show you how badass it is. So it's really incredible, but we're going to kick the day off. Got knives on his way over here. We're getting, um, the vlog came out today. We're crushing it and got a lot of cool stuff coming. So just got to keep grinding, grinding, grinding. And Rob's coming in this weekend. So it's going to be a good time. So just get ready for some good footage. Ooh, I gotta tell you, uh, I just got off phone with Kenny Capebar. You gotta make sure to go check him out. Ken's Restrepo, you gotta go check him out. He is a tattooer, uh, Marine veteran. I've been looking at all of his work on Instagram. He's so it's incredible. I'm gonna get me a new, a new piece and getting it nailed down. So I'm gonna go up to New York City, do this. <clears throat> With USA, I'm sure you've seen their Service and Ink, their Service and Ink show. So we're gonna do it for that show. So it's gonna be incredible. Like I would tell you what it's gonna be and what it's gonna be for, but I can't because it's top secret. And so it's been a great day. Got a lot of stuff done. Really been focusing, really been nailing down, hammering down. I want to get this stuff done. I'm, I'm so excited about the stuff that I have coming for the future. I know I keep talking about it and I keep teasing it because I'm going to keep teasing it until I get ready to, I'm able to crush it and I'm able to show you what it is. I uh, never want to let you all down. But life, life's tough. Like, it's tough. Uh, it's got its ebbs and flows. It's got, look, but, but what I will say is the one thing that I truly believe in is you can't enjoy the mountains when you're on the mountain if you, you don't get to suffer through the valleys. And I think that, that that's kind of the piece that that I'm getting more okay with, right? Like, 
sometimes I think that I get stuck and I want to stay in the valley because it's more comfortable for me. I'm used to chaos. I'm used to just trying to fix problems. And But you know, like you just can't live that way forever. So, uh, you know, you just got to push on. I I can't tell you how, how awesome and excited I am about these opportunities and about the people who are partnering up with me. I got a lot of goals. I'm, uh, I'm writing them down. And I'm going to achieve them. And you know what? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to share with you guys in the next few days. Next few vlogs, I'm going to share with you guys what my goals are going to be. And that way that you guys can hold me accountable. I, I love that community. I love the community of, of this, the community of owning owning it, own the dash. Go check my podcast out. I'm, I thought I'd throw a little plug in there. Um, but I got some stuff that really just, you know... I want to change the world and I'm going to do it. I'm going to find a way to do it and I'm going to continue to shoot and try to try to go after that goal and that's my that's my main goal but I got little small goals in between there that that for myself personally to make myself better every single day but life's good. Life's good. You guys are great. I the podcast is doing great and you know I'd like to hear from you all. I I, I got something cool I'm going to set up for probably this fall and I'm going to offer it out, but I got to get it all nailed down. And hopefully we can start building not just a virtual community. Hopefully we can start building communities across the nation that want to go out and be part of the doers. So that's kind of it. So, all right, I'm going to get back with you a little bit later. I got things to go do. Got to get back after the grind. Uh, it's 10.05. You know, sometimes you got to spend some time with the family. And then while they go to bed, you still got to get the grind in. So... Got another couple hours of work. Trying to knock some QuickBooks out. You know, getting that paperwork admin stuff updated. Gonna knock a little QuickBooks out. Gonna do a little bit of budgeting. And I'm gonna hit the rack. So I'm gonna get after it right now. And I'll keep you all updated. I'll keep you updated. I'll let you know when I go to bed. Because I'm not as lazy as everybody thinks I am, you know? There is the part of the work where you gotta be responsible which that part sucks. But hey, if you're gonna do the crime, you gotta do the time or, I don't know, you gotta pay to play. I like that one even better. All right, I'm gonna start paying. Well, it's official. <clears throat> I quit, I quit. <clears throat> it is 1.14 in the morning and I am trying to sync my Wells Fargo up with my QuickBooks to make my accountants happy, and I quit. I quit. I'm going to bed. But you know, whenever I'm, whenever I'm working out, I always, uh, I'm always listening to, like, I listen to on YouTube. I listen to just motivational speeches, you know, compilations. Right. I got a lot of them that I really like. I really, like, I, I love, I love them. I love them. I, they, they, they fire me up. They, and, and I listen to them over and over because every time I listen to them, you know, a different point of them, like, I don't think you can ever get enough of them because, you know, each, there's always a point in them that resonates at a different time in your life. And I got to tell you, I don't know why it hit me today, but, but I was listening to one today and it talked about how, you know, isn't it incredible how other people love to watch other people suffer, right? You never hear when people pass or when people go out and they succeed, or you don't hear so much about when they win, but you always hear about when they fail. The media loves people failing. They love, like, they, they, they love it. And I, I've seen it in my own personal life, you know, on, on a scale of about this big, because, you know, nobody gives two shits about what, what I do. But I've seen it. I've seen it, and it's incredible. Gosh, it makes me so mad. I'm going to be honest. Um, you know, you don't ever hear about the good things people do, but all you, you hear when they fail. You hear when shit goes bad, because that's the media, because the media, the news, mainstream America, mainstream news network is nothing but shit. That's why YouTube's so big. That's why people are going and getting their own content, because nobody gives two shits about all the negative stuff. You turn on, I'm telling you, you turn on any news network, and hell, no wonder people have no hope in America. But it sucks. It sucks. Mainstream media sucks. And, and it's just like, gosh, it's incredible. But anyways, anyways, back to my point. I want to tell you a quick story. I was, um, it was on my birthday, June 26th of 2015. I was driving down a road. I was actually driving down a road in, in my hometown. And this is when it hit me because I used to believe that, nah, 
I used to live in this little naive box world of, gosh, the world's great. You know, everybody's great. You know, if shit hit the fan, people are going to be there to help you. And I used to live in that world. Like, holy shit. And, uh, I don't know. I was always trying to be positive. I guess if I, I thought if I said it enough and believed it enough, and it would happen. And I was driving down the road, and I pull up, and I, I was first one on the scene of a wreck. Uh, basically, they hit in this intersection. It's a bad intersection in, in Columbia, Kentucky. And I'll never forget, I pulled up, and, and this car was, it was like a little S10 or like, you know, like a little small, small truck like that. Uh, a woman had got thrown out the window, and the vehicle had ran over and was sitting on her chest. And I pull my truck up past it, and I jump out. The first thing I do, I go to her. I look at the other victims out there, and everybody else, like, there was other people banged up, obviously. But obviously, this woman was in the most need, and I was standing there talking to her, and I was just comforting her, right? I mean, obviously, I couldn't pick it up, and I was just telling her, hey, I was holding her hand. Hey, it's, it's going to be all right. Hey, it's going to be all right. And I got so tunnel vision into the to the mass casualty. I mean, I'm not going to say mass casualty, but there's probably three or four people. <clears throat> An ambulance rolls up. Nobody's there to help me. An ambulance pulls up, and I don't know how long it goes on, because you know, in these situations, you don't really, you know, you ain't, you ain't got no stopwatch, like, oh yeah, yeah, uh, here it is. Um, but an ambulance pulls up, and I'll never forget, the ambulance the ambulance guy gets out, and, and, and I look at him, and I go, hey, hey, get some people over here, we need to lift this car off of her. And I'm not, no shit, it was sitting on her chest, no, no shit, no shit, I'm telling you right now, and I'll never forget this asshole looked at me, and he said, no, we got to call the fire department to do that because they do the extraction. And I looked at him, fire department? Are you kidding me? This is bullshit. And I'll never forget, I looked up because I was going to look for help. And I looked on the other side of the road, and there was no less than 20 people standing there like this, just filming. And it crushed me. It crushed me. It crushed me because of two things right there. First off, you've got a guy who's supposed to, to help. And I look, I understand liability, right? Bullshit. Liability, rules, whatever. Lose your job over helping somebody else. I was so frustrated, I went and got four or five other guys. And they came over there and we picked this truck up and drug her out. We gotta get a spine board. Get the fucking truck off of her. How about that? I'm sorry for my language. I'm sorry. Knives is going to bleep that out. It's just incredible. It's incredible how some people, not, first off, let's talk about a couple things that, that bother me. One thing is, it's, it's incredible how somebody can worry about the rules. I understand don't move or I got all the bullshit, right? I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> but you can't tell me there's anything that says that moving her six inches over is a lot better, is, is, is worse than leaving a vehicle sitting on her chest. You know what I'm saying? I'm just throwing it out there. And then the other piece of it that was disheartening to me was to know that the instinct of people was, I see this other human being suffering. And instead of offering to help or trying to do something to help or I pick up my phone to film it. It's not a TV show. It's someone who, guess what? It's a mother. It's a wife. It's a daughter. It's a sister. It's not for your entertainment. And I just couldn't believe it. And it was at that point to where I knew the joke was on me. America, people, human beings had lost touch with the reality of another human being suffering. It's incredible. And I know there's going to be some of you out there, well, you know, the laws, or you might get sued. Oh, sue me. Sue me. Take everything I got. Take it all. I would give it all to keep someone else from suffering. I would. I would. I don't talk about it. I do it. I do it. Multiple instances. 
Multiple instances. Let me see if it's in there. Yeah. That's why I carry this everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I won't leave the house without this or without my pistol. You know why? Because I have an obligation, an obligation to Americans, not just Americans, to human, human beings, to human beings, to do whatever I can to make the world a better place and to be someone, to be ready, to be ready to be able to help someone in a time of need. And if you're one of those people who your instinct would be to pick your phone up rather than to go help, and if you don't know how to go help, then pick your phone up to call 911, to call help. But don't ever film or stand by or record someone else's worst moment in life. And I don't know what reason it was. Even if we got the truck off, it probably wouldn't have saved her. But they landed a helicopter on the road right there and the woman died. And so for all those people, if you're watching this and you were one of those people that day because you know where it's at, you know what I'm talking about. If you're one of those people that recorded the last moments of that woman's life and that suffering and you still have it or you ever pulled it up on your phone again to show someone else, you, you are scum of the earth. Just think about that. Think about when you look at a moment, instead of looking at it as, gosh, someone's getting jumped or someone's in a bad car wreck or someone's crying or someone looks down whether it's a woman or a man no matter who they look like no matter what clothes they're wearing whether they're in a business suit or they're sitting on the side of the road in rags and beside a shopping cart treat them as you would want your mother or father treated as you would want your son or daughter treated. As you would want your grandson or granddaughter treated. As you would want your brother or your sister treated. Treat them the same way. Because guess what? The reality is, is that they are someone's daughter. Someone's son. Someone's brother or sister someone's granddaughter or grandson and possibly someone's mother or father you remember that and you put it in that perspective and then you decide what you do even if you don't have the skills to help you don't know how much it could possibly help by going and tell them, hey, stand in there by them, comfort them in their worst moment. Don't, don't use it for entertainment. Never, ever use someone else's suffering, pain, or possibly worst moments of their life as your entertainment. So here we are. Look at that, look at that. Military trail shirt. Look at this, look at on my back. I don't know if you can see it. Going. We're down here in San Antonio, getting ready to go give a speech. Nice Monroe, looking good. Look at it. Woo, woo. Down in the military town, USA. Look at it. America. America.